listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Black Sales After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Black Sales After Show. Yo, hey guys, what's up? Welcome to After Buzz TV Black Sales Episode 2. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. <laughs> Roman numeral 1-1, one, one, or aye, aye, if you will. I am your host, Captain Ryan Hooks, coming at you. <laughs> Joining me on the panel today, the newly bearded Miss Roya Tahiri. R is the first letter of my name. Hello. R is your first letter. <laughs> Pirate puns and more. Yes. Well. I, I felt bad that you and Lem had to carry the beard thing, so I thought I'd come in with a beard. Yes, and, um, rocking a new beard. Yes, I'm not used to it. It needs to be trimmed a little bit. Is your face warm? It's super warm. It's such a great feeling mm -hmm. when your face is warm. <laughs> it's, it's a little chilly today in Los Angeles. A, a balmy 50 degrees for all you in the Midwest and you know the, the northern states freezing out there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Black Sales episode I I. So, what did you think about this week's episode? I liked it a lot. I thought there was a lot more. Uh, I can't character development in it and um it created more storyline like more what's gonna happen more plot points right yeah exactly and i was really excited about that i'm excited about that too so i read a lot of reviews about the show over the past couple weeks you know leading into because obviously they released episode one before it was on and then they released uh, the episode live and then you know episode two now and a lot of the reviews that i read were a positive in the show but the negative aspects were there weren't like, there wasn't enough action, basically. Which, from what I've read in some of the articles and coming into the show and what I've learned, the first four episodes of this show are going to be primarily character development. Because when they did all this development, they wanted it, you know, they wanted you to learn about these characters and connect to these characters so that when they get into these sh episodes with action sequences and when stuff starts getting crazy, you have somebody to associate with. You have a, mm -hmm. a good guy, whether they're good or not, you have somebody that you want to cheer for and you want to root for, um, because then there's an episode coming up where they're gonna show what it's like to take a ship. Hmm, interesting. And they're also gonna show what it's like to fear when you're taking that ship. And the good thing about character development as well is that when they actually do have a action scene, we'll know in our head, oh, well, John Silver's going to act this way because that's just how he that's is. That's what John Silver versus, does. Versus, you know, yeah, exactly. John Silver's a survivor and he's going to do whatever mm -hmm. it takes to survive, whether yep. it's the right thing or the wrong thing. Yep. Or, you know, exactly, Gates is loyal and Gates is going to be loyal. Mm -hmm. Or Captain Flint's going to fight because that's what Captain Flint does. Yep. So well, I don't know if you call that fighting, but... <laughs> that, that was a little bit weak at the end of the, the fight scene, the, the first episode. It was roughhousing, um, just that, a little bit. <laughs> until the cannonball got involved, and yeah. then suddenly it's all downhill. Um, so, I also, in reading other articles this week, I learned that this episode, episode I'm sorry, episode one, rather, of Black Sails, got 3.5 million viewers, which is the highest rated stars premiere that they've ever had. Okay. Now, 3.5 million isn't really that high in regards to primetime television in terms of NBC, CBS, you know, the big major networks. With, you know, they're pulling in 10, 20 million viewers. Um, so just I did a little comparison, took a look at some numbers. So right now, the number one show on television in the fall, based on the most consistent viewership, was NCIS, which pulls in around 21 million viewers. Which NCIS? Just NCIS. Okay. Straight up NCIS. The original <laughs> NCIS, CBS television. But... Shows like Parks and Recreations, for example, mm -hmm. only gets 4.1 million viewers on average. And a show like Family Guy, which has been on air forever, only pulls in about 2.8 million viewers. So 3.5 is a pretty good number for a show, especially on a, a prime paid cable, you know, or a non-cable non paid network that you have to get extra for. Mm -hmm. um, 
And a, a good chunk of their, their views of the show came from the online platform, which we talked about last week, which I was interested to see that they released the episode a week early online. Uh, they got over 90,000 views to different online networks, wow. plus, plus the on-demand, plus the, the paid channels and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So that's good for stars that this show is getting viewership, and it's going to be built up as a, a mainstream show. Now, question. Bef- I don't mean to put you on no, the spot, go. but did you compare what their previous – you said that – uh, Black Sales was the most highest rating that they have compared to what was their last show that they Spartacus had. would be the show that they would have compared it to because Spartacus has been their highest rated show prior to this. Mm-hmm. And Spartacus was getting around 2.5, 2.8 million viewers. Okay. And then uh, is Black Sales the most, after Spartacus, the most recent show that yes. starts as. Okay. Well, they have the, that Da Vinci show as well, but that's a series show. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it gets the viewership that. That this got at least for the premiere. Okay. So we'll see what happens now with the second episode in terms of viewership. I'll, I'll talk about that next week. Um, where now that they're not doing the on- online platform, now that it's going to be through you know primarily on demand or through the, the paid network um, that you have to subscribe to. So we'll see what they, what they pull next week in terms of those different numbers. Um, so I have a question though, and I was thinking about this. Now that we're looking at this show, and you know obviously it's it's a grand show. It's big budget. It's high end and it's there's a lot to it which is really impressive in the way you watch it but we know that they've renewed for a second season already Mm -hmm. so we know that there's going to be at least 18 episodes because this is eight in this season and there's usually when you renew is at least 10 if not 20 so if you think about an 18 episode do you think this show right now is on pace to be a series that can continue past two seasons or do you think that they should start looking at marketing it as an 18 episode miniseries i think they should market as an 18 miniseries I just I, I feel like there's a lot that they can go with, mm-hmm. but because how you're saying there's uh, critics saying oh well, there's not enough action and this and that I feel if it's a mini series it would kind of explain in the end what would happen versus if it was a season there's going to be built up to one conclusion at the end it's going to be related to the the Arca de Luma and finding that treasure yeah exactly and then once they find that maybe they can do a different kind of series out of a it spin off yeah versus compared to some other shows like Dexter where it keeps going and then the ending end result's just not and, good. Yeah. <laughs> seven seasons later, you're like, oh, is exactly. This like you're invested in five seasons and you keep watching it to keep watching it. Mm-hmm. But at the end, you're kind of disappointed in the way that it ends. Yeah. And I feel like with a miniseries, you could take it out of the time frame that it's in, move it up ahead and go with a story from that. And, and I like the concept of a miniseries. And I think that I wish it was done more. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Mob City just did a six part miniseries that they premiered on TNT um, about the mafia in L.A., which was pretty successful. And they were looking to maybe renew it, but they didn't. But if you think of even success of something like Band of Brothers or The Pacific, yes. which came out as a 10-part miniseries, and that was all they were doing. That's what they knew when they went into it. You know, And those, the Band of Brothers is hugely successful. Yeah. I mean, there's so many sales of that. I've, I've watched it 10 times. Yeah, same. You know, I love that. And so I, I like the concept of a miniseries, and I, I think that shows now are too concerned with trying to continue on a storyline that isn't even any good, and you, you're losing more money than you're making. If exactly. you said, you know what, I'm making 18 episodes, here's our budget, here's what we're doing, go, then I, I think that's a good idea. Exactly, and just like the Band of Brothers, they did, they did the Pacific yeah, exactly. later on. So it's another way that they could do that with black sales, maybe from a different person. I mean, and everyone loves pirates. So I think pirates, there's a fascination with pirates and the history and the culture that will always be you know, appealing to, to viewers. Mm-hmm. I mean, forever, I will always love pirate dramas no matter what it is. I mean, I'll watch it, whether it's bad or good. So I think that there's going to be an appeal and a draw regardless of what happens. So let's talk about pirates. All righty. Aye, aye, mateys. <laughs> so in, as we are starting to watch the show, we're seeing a lot of different relationships that are being built. There's a lot of different dynamics in the relationships between characters. So obviously the show episode starts off with Max and Eleanor. Yes. Um, so there is a relationship with the two of them where Max is definitely in love with Eleanor. Which I wasn't sure in the very beginning when she talks about, we can get out of here, we can get out of here. I wasn't sure if she was serious or if she was trying to use Eleanor as a way for money. Mm-hmm. But once we they had their... Um, uh, their conversation together at the end, you could really see she was in love with Eleanor. Right. And it was just heartbreaking. That scene. And there's this oh, disappointment. And she- <laughs> yes. Because as we find out, Eleanor, Eleanor has high ambitions. Yeah. Um, I think that she's been cast in the, the shadow of her father, as we saw in the scene where she's trying to bargain with the pirate who brought her the stuff that they'd stolen. And he's like, you know, when did you sprout tits? And where I see you're not your father and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, but she doesn't put up with that kind of stuff. Right. At and- all. And the thing is, Eleanor has potential in this new future to survive. Max has no potential. She's yep. just scum. The no one, she's never going to move up, even if her and Eleanor stay together. So uh, Max had to leave. 
And poor Eleanor didn't want that. Not poor Eleanor, poor Max. Yeah. Eleanor didn't want that. Poor Max, Eleanor didn't want that. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't think the relationship is done. I don't think the dynamics of that is over. Um, I don't think that Max is going to escape yet. Right. Well, yeah, I don't think anyone... It's a little we'll, too soon we'll for see. that, but... Um, what's the rule about women being on ships? Is that still a whole thing where pirates don't like women on the ship? Because in Pirates of the Caribbean, they didn't like Kira Knightley being on yes, the ship. Yes, so. generally there is a rule of women on the ship. Um, but historically, as we find, uh, I, and I think we'll see probably in later episodes, Anne Bonny, um, who true. is a historically true pirate who was viciously ruthless and was known for her ability to kill and her sword ability, which they've already kind of tipped at in this episode and the first episode as well, that we'll see more with her for sure. She, she needs to pull up the hat a little bit or put her hair behind her ears. Oh, no, She's reminding me of the Incredibles, the daughter from the Incredibles with the hair that's oh, just, just always, always in, in her the face. face. Yeah. I'm just like, just a little bit. Let me see your two eyes. That'd be fine with Violet. <laughs> yeah, Violet. Exactly. I, I like Thank the you, one eye. <laughs> I, I don't know. It gives her like a, a quality. Does it? Like, like a mysterious kind of seductive quality that you're like, oh, do I hate her? No, I kind of love her. Mm, ew, I don't ew, know. She yeah. seems very plain. A little her bit. Her face is just very, I mean, obviously all the other Ooh. actresses on the show, are not, they're very beautiful because you see their face, yes. but I don't know. Maybe if she puts her hair behind her, she but won't be But Anne Bonny wasn't a good looking person either. So maybe she's too pretty for Anne Bonny and <laughs> they're trying to make her look dull. That's, that's fair. That's okay. fair. Cool. So, um, so we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that. So, okay. uh, Eleanor is, is getting around, and we also have a really good relationship with her and Vane. So, we learned in this episode that her and Vane had a sexual history. Yes. Which I mentioned last episode, mm -hmm. and I, I thought that was going to be the case, and it is the case. Um, so, Vane basically comes to her and says, Hey, I think you are cheating us or withholding information from us, and we want in. We want to go get money too. We want to do these things. And Eleanor shows up to play ball this week. Yeah, I I, I thought Hannah did an awesome job this week. Um, in every scene that she was in, she was very strong and mm -hmm. very commanding of the scene. Yeah, um, just couldn't look away, especially in the very first. Yeah, scene I, was gonna, I was gonna point that out. <laughs> okay, fine. She was naked and I liked it. Uh -huh. Not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> no. So, <laughs> but she uh, she basically tells Vane and puts him in his place. You know what I found really interesting is that the way Van approached her. He was very genuine. He was very sensitive. Yeah, I liked that. That was a good side of him. Yeah, and I didn't expect that. I thought, oh, okay, maybe because in the first episode you see him, he just kills. He doesn't care. He just kills. It's all about pirate and his rules or whatever. And then now he's kind of asking her in a nice way, hey, I know we used to have a thing, but can we make this about business and not about us? That was a weird approach and, from and a pirate. I, I said I liked it, and I think that... I think if we learn more about their relationship, I think we're going to find that he might be in that relationship a very caring person, a very like genuine and like loving type of person that maybe it's something that only she saw. Because, mm -hmm. you know, historically, again, the show has a few pirates that are real. So Anne Bonny's a real pirate. Um, Calico Jack Rackham is a real pirate. And Captain Charles Vane is a real pirate. These three people were historically known. All three of them were known for being excessively vicious, very ruthless. Um, and actually, historically, uh, Charles Vane was involved with Captain Henry Jennings, who was the, the group of people that went and found the Spanish treasure ship, the Urca de Lima. Oh. Um, it wasn't until 1718 that actually happened. Wait a second. Happened. Whoa. Wait. Historically, the show is inaccurate. <laughs> Whoa. But Don't you dare ruin it, okay? I'm just kidding. Spoiler <laughs> alert. But there's no, there's no Captain Jennings as of yet, so we'll okay. see if he shows up. And it actually doesn't take place historically until uh, 1718, and this is set in 1715. So you're saying if Captain Jennings does show up, I have the right to throw an apple pie at your face? You may. For so, maybe potentially so spoiling. Historical spoiler alert. If you read anything <laughs> online ever, you can find out that Captain Charles Vane used to serve under Captain Henry Jennings, <laughs> as well as Calico Jack Rackham. And oh, so he served under Rackham. Yes, yes. Interesting. No, 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 not oh. under Rackham. I'm sorry. Uh, Captain Jennings was the the captain of the right. ship that Rackham and uh, Charles Vane before he became captain served under. So if he's a captain already, it's obviously gonna happened. it's gonna be slightly skewed historically. Mm -hmm. But there was, you know, the true treasure ship that they found and um as a matter of fact, with them being so ruthless of pirates, there was an issue uh, in 1718 where England tried to pardon all pirates. Uh, so they could become normal citizens and Oh yeah, I saw that in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And they did it with Johnny and, Depp. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and the, well, they were basically pardoning the entire Isle of Nassau, if you will. And 
they said no. That Captain Vane and Rackham and a few other pirates, there was, he had 40 people on his crew. They said, you know what? We don't care. We want to keep looting and polluting uh, because we want the money. Interesting. So, so yeah. So, um, I think it would be cool to see a softer side of Charles Vane in mm -hmm. this, uh, especially when it comes to Eleanor Guthrie. Now, I can't help, but every time I see Captain Vane or the way he reacts, I keep thinking of Shane from The Walking Dead. And I'm just bit. expecting John him Bernthal. to, like, smack or, like, to change and be such a jerk that Shane was in The Walking Dead, you know? And right. And so I'm trying to push that out every time I watch him in a scene. Like I said, and I love. But he kind of proves it sometimes that he is very similar to that character. I, lo I loved the contrast this week. <laughs> and I don't think in Walking Dead that you saw that. So it's cool to see that, that they're giving depth to these characters. They're mm -hmm. giving love stories and stories of power. Because, again, with Eleanor, you see the, the contrast with her and Max. And mm -hmm. that, there's a, there, is, there is love between them. And I, whether they admit it or not, or whether Eleanor admits it or not, rather, there's something between them yeah. or, or they wouldn't be doing it. Expe uh, she, she pays for she, Max she to make sure she Max. doesn't have sex. No one else has sex with her. Yeah, and <laughs> there was guards at her door that Max additionally paid for mm -hmm. beyond the other guards that were there. Yeah. Which is weird. There was six guards at the door and she walked out the front door and nobody saw her. <laughs> well, when you have a pirate hooker that looks like a schoolgirl wannabe, <sighs> like, I guess you would look the other way. I guess. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just putting it out there. See what happens. So, yeah, so they... There's they're, they're setting good dynamics, I think. And uh, as much as you want to hate on the lack of action in this show, this show is very much a drama, and that's great because that makes me want to watch it even more. Because mm -hmm. then I'm going to be like, oh, I'm really into this show and the drama and this and that. And then all of a sudden, stuff's going to start blowing up, Michael Bay style, and I'm going to love it even more. Yeah, so, that's true. So I, I think Michael that Bay. it's anticipation for all these things. And from what I understand, there is a lot more to come with the action sequence, so those of you who are fans of the explosions and the sword fights and the, all that, it's coming. A new a new tide, if you will, mm -hmm. so to speak, is coming. So, so yeah, again, I like the dynamics, and we also have a pretty good relationship that's being developed here with uh, the contrast of Captain Flint, Billy Bones, and the Quartermaster Gates. Yes. I love Billy. I mean, well, I love Billy. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I really like Gates and his character. He's just such a sensitive guy. Billy, I love watching him. Yes. <laughs> so he's good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Quartermaster Gates, played by Mark Ryan, who actually will be joining us next week on our panel to discuss Black Sails. Yes. Um, will be coming in, Mark Ryan. So feel free to tweet, tweet us questions. Let us know what you think, what you want to ask him. Mm -hmm. uh, also, feel free to leave comments on the, the panel. We'll go ahead and make sure that Mark gets those. Uh, but yeah, Gates is, is very loyal. He's a great... Mm -hmm great guy um in terms of his character and you know he's smart he thinks about things um and we even see that then when you know billy bones is off searching the whole island trying to find john silver mm -hmm. uh, after he had escaped from the boat but gates is just hanging out yeah watching watching people on the island and bones is kind of mad about it. he's like hey what are you doing and he explains to him that you know if he's buying something of great bulk he's gonna have to, to pay for it or there's going to be some money transactions, so we need to figure out what it's going to be because it's going to be jewels or pearls, because gold is too heavy to carry. That much gold is too heavy to carry around. Mm -hmm. So he's basically just following around the appraiser. Yep. And he's sitting there, and I, I love the part where they're debating about the artwork, <laughs> where he's like, "It's plants, it's plants, it's tits, it's tits." <laughs> yes. what, what is different? And then there was a drastic difference in the painting and yes. how terrible the one was and how good the other one was. So. And it kept going too. That was the funny. We just the guy just looks at the paintings and he's yeah, I mean, back and forth. How do you explain art to somebody who doesn't even bathe? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, for once, he actually had messed up teeth a little bit. A little dirt. He had a little yellow on his teeth. A little teeth. dirt in the teeth. This is great. I, you know, I kind of like the white teeth. <laughs> well, you're just used to it now. I, I'm, it's, I didn't really notice it this week like I did the first week. That's true. But they didn't really smile either. Nobody's happy this week. Exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of drama this wah, week on the show. Wah, wah. So. So, no, and then we also have uh, some other relationships because we have the the contrast with uh, John Silver mm -hmm. uh, and Max because they're into a partnership, whether it's mutual or not. Both of them are planning to gain something from it, and I think that they are working together well. I I don't feel like there was a lot of tension between the two of them. So you don't think that there's sexual tension between them? You think that's more business related? Well, I mean, Max is gorgeous, so yeah, but she's in love with well. Eleanor, right? So I, don't, I didn't get that a lot of sexual tension between them. I'm not saying that there won't be. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel it that this week that there was that kind of... I felt this week was very business, very much. And I think that with Max's plans to try to escape with Eleanor, and you know she wants us to go through as much as John Silver does. That's true. And John Silver's an opportunist, as we've learned from just two episodes, that he's going to do whatever it takes to survive. Even if that means putting himself in a situation where he might be in trouble, but he's basically 
indisposable. But there's also one letter that he only focuses on, and that's I, meaning himself. Yes. So Max could be screwed in the end. We'll find out. I know. I don't like that. I just want her and Eleanor to get to I, I think Max is too smart <laughs> so far to, to, to do anything that will put her in a situation where she's basically screwed over. So I think that she will, will cover her assets, if you will. That was, you, a, that was, was a, that a pun? That was a little bit of a pun. It was a bad one. It's not really covered that much. So that, that, that's true. <laughs> it was totally exposed <laughs> in several scenes. A for effort, maybe. It, only an A, not a T for effort. Maybe five, four stars. Okay, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> that. All right, so so again, we're developing a lot of really cool characters, and that's what they're looking to do, I think, in these first four episodes because. Again, they want us to relate and associate with these characters, which I think that we are. I, I, I think. Just so you even, can relate to one of the characters. I mean, several of them. Yeah. I mean, and I, I like the I like many qualities of all of them. There's mm-hmm. not things about any of these actors or actresses that I'm like, uh, you know. I mean, I don't really like Rackham's facial hair. facial hair yeah. and his haircut's kind of douchey, but <laughs> you know what? That's fine. I mean, that's character development. That's character. That's making me. They're they're establishing them as villains. Yeah. Whether they'll end up being villains or not. Um, we'll find out because I th- think they're not too far in predictions that there's going to be something with them and teaming up with other pirates mm-hmm. coming up. Yeah. Um, I, mm-hmm. I foresee that because they're going to need each other. Both groups, both camps will need each other to, to survive and also to succeed mm-hmm. in the upcoming endeavors. So we'll find out what happens with all of that in future episodes. That being said, I would like to talk to you folks today about iTunes. Oh, do you? Oh, I do. I love Aww. iTunes. So you can find all of our content on iTunes. Uh, it's free to download. Uh, After Buzz TV puts out over 67 shows every week with over 100 countries and over 25 million subscribers. So feel free to go into iTunes and check us out. We would appreciate it. Give us a rating. Five stars is the best. Leave us comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, We do these shows because we love doing these shows. We love to give our opinions, and we love to hear from you guys. So let us know what you think of the show. Let us know what you think is going to happen in the show. Leave us comments. And, uh, you know, get at us because we want you to be happy with what we're giving you. Um, we actually had some great comments this week about the knowledge that we brought to the show, which is great because I spent a lot of time, you know, researching and looking into information about the, the pirate history mm-hmm. and also about the beards. So, <laughs> hence Roy's beard this week. Um, put, put that on there. There you go. Bought up. I don't know why. I for, just for, those, made a song. for those of you that are watching us on the video feed, Roy, yeah. Roy is wearing a beard, and we mm-hmm. see that. If you're watching us uh, and listening to us through iTunes, um, you can also check us out on AfterBuzzTV.com and see the videos. Uh, it scares and, me what's on the desk. <laughs> it's, it's like a small animal. <laughs> it's creepy. Uh, and Mr. Lim Gonzalez, we miss your beard this week. Uh, he'll be joining us next week on the panel. And so moving right along, <laughs> check out iTunes, five-star rating, you're the best. Yes. And we'll give you out some shout-outs to the YouTube comments next week. Um, oh, yeah, because hopefully we got lots to ask Mark Ryan when he's in mm-hmm. here. Hashtag fuzzy wuzzy. No, no, hashtag fuzzy man. Hashtag fuzzy man. Stay fuzzy. Stay fuzzy. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. I, I like staying fuzzy because my face is warm. <laughs> um, so in, in, in this episode, in, in this show, I think, I, we're getting a lot of cool contrast beside from the characters, about society. And um, I, I noticed some of the comments that, that people made, and I noticed uh, th- that there is, again, I, I talked about this last week, a contrast between you know a monarchical system and a democratic system. Uh, a couple of things that I noticed that really caught me and struck me as funny, um, there's a scene where Max is giving the pirate a handjob, basically, and Silver comes in, and <laughs> he's like, have you no decency? And he storms out. Like, he's mad that somebody came in while he was doing this, mm-hmm. and yet he's paying a prostitute. Yeah. So, like, there's a, a funny contrast in the decency that these pirates have and, you know, the code they follow. Which, where he was standing to get that done was such a weird spot because he was behind a little, uh, what are those a little wall Yeah, things? dressing wall. Yeah, basically. he was behind that. Why, why not be somewhere else in the middle of the floor? Or, I don't know. It was just an interesting. Yeah, he was, like, hiding himself. Yeah, basically. so people couldn't see through the window. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, his credit name is Handjob Pirate. Just Handjob look Pirate that up. on the credits. Yes, that would be awesome to put on your resume, wouldn't it? I, I think so, as an actor <laughs> coming out. Yeah, what, what was your favorite role? Yeah, I played a Handjob Pirate. Yes, so, on Black Sales. On Black Sales. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that. And then also, there's a really funny comment that Rackham makes when they're going into the wreck area, which basically um, is a cove of. You know, different places where a lot of people that do opium and um, a lot of homeless people basically were staying and hiding out. Mm-hmm. And 
he's like, I don't want to go in there. This is where people that don't wear condoms go. Like, it's 1715. I didn't really know that condom use was prevalent in the 1700s. However, it is, apparently. That's and good. Yeah, okay. it's great. I mean, people that are having sex with prostitutes, you don't want your stuff to fall off. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. you know, any kind of diseases floating around in that time frame. Because I, I think it was a little bit more of a dirty time than it is now. Yeah. So, Especially a lot of peepers, apparently. Apparently there's peepers. Mm-hmm. Which is funny then, because yeah, the, the prostitute makes the comment to John Silver when he's peeping through the hole <laughs> to watch the transaction take place. Um, you know, and when Max is trying to get the money from Rackham and from Vane. And she he, she's mad that he paid her basically so that he could look through the wall at somebody else. Yeah. Now, can I ask you a kind of off-topic question? Yes. But it's about John Silver. Okay. Do you think he's a coward? Um, you know what? I think John Silver is going to have a defining moment in the show where he's going to stand up and and do something. So you think he kind of is a coward at this point in time? I think at this point, yes. Okay. Because um, I, I would agree because there's been two situations in this last episode where he hid and uh, hid from the transaction, which I get it's smart. He's supposed to do that. Yeah, he's, but then the second time when he's out in the rock area and he's hiding again. And he sends other people out that die for him. Yes, yes, the the gaunt man as well as the old uh, hobo man mm-hmm. both get beat up and killed, so he can escape. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think that, and I'm hoping there will be a, a moment in an episode, and I'm probably going to say episode six, where I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm picking an episode, and I'm I'm going to say episode six is okay. when we're going to see John Silver have a defining moment as a character that's going to show his courage, because I mean. Th- th- I, th- I think he's smarter than the fact that he picks his fights. Okay. There's no point for him to do something rash and stupid where he's going to get killed. I'm going to pull a Price is Right moment and do five. Five is my number, Bob. Five. One one lower <laughs> yes. with episode five. So episode five or episode six. Uh, and let us know what you think, too, on YouTube, iTunes. Uh, do you think that John Silver is a coward? Do you think that he will have a defining moment as a character where he will do something heroic and courageous and maybe save someone? Yeah. I don't I'm not going to say who he's going to save. But I'm going to say that he's going to have a defining moment as a character. And that's my my guess as to right now because I don't know for sure. But I'm going to put that out there and see what happens. <laughs> but anyway, so, like I said, I, I'm getting a lot of cool contrast, like I said, with this, with, with society. Mm-hmm. And the other thing, too, that we're seeing is potential thoughts of Eleanor talking about wanting to, if, you know, with her father being gone, she wants to keep Nassau as an island. They want to continue to cultivate it and make it into a community and right. you know have cattle and build an army and start a community and have a government and I, I don't know if she sees herself at the head of that government because she talked about her father at the beginning but as the episode progressed I think that she is now potentially thinking for herself. I, I feel that she's because her father's reputation is now messed up yeah. so she has to create a new brand a new thing for people to want uh, to trust her in yeah. so I feel she does think she's going to be a part of this. And I think her and Flint's relationship, which will obviously grow more in the season, uh, will explain why she thinks she's in that position with him, even though she is a woman and could cause conflict. No, and it's great. And I love shows that have strong women characters because I think in society still, it's still underplayed a lot with certain gender roles and that kind of stuff. And in the show, we've got three great women characters um, you know, with obviously Max, but even though she's a prostitute, she's still very smart. Mm-hmm. With Eleanor, who is, although vulgar, very business savvy um, and very much an opportunist as well, and is going to make her way one way or another. You know, and then with Anne Bonnie, who we haven't seen much with, and I think that we will, because um, I think she's going to, you know, her, her reputation is preceding her as a real life pirate. So I think they're going to have to do something with her that's going to make us see how great she was and why people respected her so much as a person and as a pirate so i, I think that we'll, we'll get more of these female pirates and i am looking forward to that because like i said i like shows that have strong characters as women and i think the show you know for having a, a cast of generally unknown actors and actresses is very strong mm-hmm. and i think one thing the two that, that that does which we didn't talk about last week but i was thinking about this past week is i don't associate any of these actors with other characters so i don't look at them and think oh you know this is the actor from such and such and something else and that happens sometimes when actors true but you did come you yes. were with me when uh, you compared. Hold on, hold on, we'll get okay there. um so and i don't i don't look at any <laughs> one of these actors and think about another role that they've played which is which is good because now i'm thinking that 
Toby Stevens is Captain Flint. To me, he's Captain Flint. Yeah. And so I don't see him in any other light, which is good because I'm going to buy into the things that they're selling. And that being said, I did make a comment when we were watching this week's episode that I thought Eleanor Guthrie's character, played by Hannah New, um, is, and it's comparable to me in the way that her facial structure is and also the way that she speaks and the, even the motion she speaks is very much like Kira Knightley from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. I was going to say that last week, but because I already mentioned so many Pirates there of the Caribbean so parts. comparisons, and like, I didn't want to bury myself. But I'm so glad you mentioned it. <laughs> yes. Now that it's on the floor, we can talk about it. And, and, and this show, to me, in no way... In any way, in shape, or form, reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean in the aspect of the the stylization of the show and the characters and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a pirate show, and Pirates of the Caribbean is by far the most famous, most popular pirate show that's ever been made. And so, of course, it's going to be compared to that in the aspect of that's what people of our generation have to associate Mm -hmm. to. Um, I mean, that being said, you could also talk about Muppet Treasure Island if you're going to compare some stuff to treasures. So, you know. Maybe when they find the boat, we'll get to that comparison. <laughs> when, when we get the eagle coming yes, in exactly. singing. I actually recently watched Muppet Treasure Island oh, yeah. in honor of this show on TV. So, so yeah. So, <laughs> and, and there are some qualities, and that mean, I mean, because they're English, you know, I mean. That being said, they could be from a similar town, so they mm-hmm. do have a, a similar voice, flow, and sound. But I don't think in any way, shape, or form I associate with um, Eleanor Guthrie's character at all to what Keira Knightley did in Pirates of the Caribbean. They were both very strong characters, though, for yeah, females. Yeah, but Keira Knightley was annoying. But that's just Keira Knightley. Okay, Keira Knightley, I'm sorry, is an annoying <laughs> actress. And in most of the roles she plays, she, she annoys me. And I don't get that with, with Hannah New's character as Eleanor Guthrie. I like her. Okay. This character. I liked her from the very beginning when she told that guy to basically screw off mm-hmm. and she dipped her fingers in the water and he's like, I'm going to go F myself, you know, and because <laughs> she's talking about making money and she's, she's about advancement and about gain. And I like the power in that. And, you know, so I don't, again, I don't associate them. And I think that I will not hate her the way that I do Karen Knightley. So you really hate Karen Knightley? I mean, she just annoys me. She rubs me the wrong way. Okay. Like okay. I, and even in, Agree Pir- to disagree, in, but okay. in Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> in the third one, when she gives that big speech before they hoist the colors, like I didn't, e- I didn't even believe that. I didn't even buy into that scene. And that's one of my favorite scenes of all the movies is that big battle scene right before then. And they're like, oh, hoist the colors. And, you know, they're getting ready to go to work. And I just, you know, I would have rather somebody else gave that speech. Okay. I would have rather seen Mackenzie Crook give that speech. <laughs> one eye and all. So I'm, I'm just saying, that's all I'm saying. So it, no one bring up uh, Kara Knightley anymore. No, you can bring up Kira Knightley. I mean, what do you what do you guys think? Let us know again. Feel free to comment on our iTunes, uh, on our YouTube pages. Uh, do you think that there is a comparable factor between Hannah New and Kira Knightley? The characters, or are you talking about the actress and yeah? The I'm, talk, I'm sorry, I'm talking about. I'm just characters? using their real names in terms of their characters. So okay, whatever character Knightley's name was in Pirates of the Caribbean, Miss Swan, Miss Swan, Swan. There you go, Eleanor. Was it Eleanor? Elizabeth? Elizabeth Swan. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I like uh, Eleanor Guthrie so much better already that I'm going to call both of them Eleanor. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. Anyways, let's go on. Let's talk about the show now. No uh, more pirates, I guess. This is about the show. It's really the show. I know, right? So, <laughs> all right. So um, we have some good plot line developing here because we're getting more background with Vane and them. And Rackham is smart, too. Whether you hate his douchey haircut or not, um, he's the one that's making the plays here. He's almost kind of telling Vane what's up. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not really. He's doing it in a very political manner. Yeah. Um, and he's saying, you know, this is the right thing for us because we're going to make money. I mean, we're investing $5,000, basically. We'll say dollars, even though it's pesos or pearls or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. But for the viewers, we'll say $5,000 to make $5 million. So them buying this map is $5 million that they could potentially salvage from this ship, um, the Urca de Lima. So he's, you know, playing these roles and helping progress the storyline. Um, and I, I think that it's going to lead to... Again, that partnership that I was talking about between everyone, because everyone's going to need everyone else. Mm-hmm. You know, as we start to relate and associate with all these characters, we start to see that they also have flaws. And he can't swim, apparently. Is apparently, this flaw. <laughs> very well. And he lost the pearls. Yeah. In First of all, why was he in charge of holding the pearls? I get it was his idea. I get that. Well, he's but the one that went and took the loan out. Yeah, I get that. That's fine. But Captain uh, Vane. Vane should have been the one holding it because he was not sure about who to give it to. No, Vane would have killed everyone and kept the money. Exactly. That's just what he should have done. He should have been like, I'll hold on to the pearls and then, poke, give me the stuff and, book, you know. <laughs> That's what happens when you stab someone and it goes, poke. That's the sound <laughs> That's the, yeah. the new sound, the yes. new poking sound that you have. When you die. <laughs> so, when you die, you get poked and yeah. you boop. 
No, he can swim. He just didn't uh, hold on to the money. Nope. So it's fine. So, <laughs> and, and I like to this episode that um, they're, they're, they're telling stories um, and they're developing in that aspect of, you know, I loved the, the fact when um, Flint goes to Eleanor and, you know, she tells him, hey, you know, your father's been injured. He's on our ship. Um, and this sets up more of this potential societal thing because Flint sees this as an opportunity. He wants to be a king. Mm -hmm. He mentioned it in the end of last week's episode that he's going to be the king of the new world and the, his crew were going to be the princes. So, and he's also, I think, seeing this as an opportunity to, to he even says, to start a new nation. You know, when you start a new mm -hmm. nation, what's the first thing you do is you elect a king. He mm -hmm. says governor, but I think in his eyes, he sees king and he sees himself as king. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that's going to cause issues later down the road where these other people who have these, these thoughts of societal demo democracy and, you know, that want equality and are very open and sharing and all the pirates who have seemed to be very democratic and the fact that they give equally and, you know, they, they talk and they vote yeah, I mean, I, I see that, but I feel it's going to boil down to who has the weapons and who's pointing at who. If he's got cannons and all that stuff, he's going to be able to tell people what to do. And he talked about building an army. He said, you know, exactly. we're going to... And when whoever shows up, because they're expecting something to come. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the British or whether it's the Spanish, the island is going to be in trouble, and these people are going to show up looking to reclaim what has been stolen mm -hmm. and looking for revenge and redemption on what has been done to them. So they're talking about building an army, building ships, training soldiers. Uh, they say soldiers, training pirates, but mm -hmm. they mean soldiers. You know, giving, getting cattle and starting farms. And I think the pirates would definitely be on board for it. As long as they were getting paid the amount that they should yeah. and were able to change their lives, I think they yeah, would do and, it. And he said he wants to give them hope. Yeah. You know, they've lost hope and they have nothing to do, so they want to get more of that back. Um, and I really love the reference this week. Uh, you know, because they, they randomly throw in these cool little references here and there. Uh, when he talks about Odysseus uh, and his journey to Ithaca, which is based off of Homer's uh, The Odyssey. Mm -hmm. uh, Odysseus is the main character, and the whole book is basically about a, a travel, his journey. Um, so I, I wonder if he's maybe comparing himself even to Odysseus on this journey that he's been going on in this turmoil of life. Now, did you write down his the quote, or did you just the, know the one about the the shovel? The shovel, yeah, yeah. So basically, and he tells him a story from the book where um, somebody tells Odysseus that the only way that he can be at peace at life is if when he takes an oar and he walks so far inland, somebody mistakes it for a shovel. Mm -hmm. Essentially, meaning the the people there don't know water. Because if you said to me, "Hey, that's a shovel," it, it, those people have never known the troubles of the sea. Question. Answer. Do you think this is a tie-in to where he, at the end, we see him at, arrive at the lady's house where he rides uh, forever and forever and ever, and then he ends up at this lady's place super tired? So at the end of the episode... Yeah, Do you think it's episode, kind of like a metaphor um, for that? It could potentially be a metaphor. Yeah, a good connection there where Flint <laughs> rides his horse inland in the island at nighttime at a mm -hmm. furious pace, and he arrives at the house of a woman who is unnamed uh, at the end of the episode, is also uncredited. I did, did a little looking, and I think... Correct me if I'm wrong when we get there, but I think that this character is uh, Miranda Barlow. I'm um, just based on looking at some stuff at IMDb, um, played by Louise Barnes. Hmm. But I'm not positive. Just, I thought their facial structures looked the same. So I think that that's who's going to be. But he he basically collapses, and it almost like is it he's at peace. It's mm -hmm. like the first time that he can really relax after the events that have taken place so far with him struggling to find the map, him you know killing last week uh, the character. Did you make a person last year? A little tiny person that's... <laughs> a little Wreck tiny person Ralph? last week? <laughs> uh, I did not make a little tiny person last week. But... I did. Guilty. Oh. Sorry. Well, then we know. Okay. So, uh, he, basically, he collapses, and I think it's him finally getting a chance to rest and be at peace. So, we'll see if this turmoil of all these things start to weigh on him, too. The way he relaxed, though, it... For me, I felt like that was, I know this might be getting into a little bit of predictions, but I feel that she uh, might be his wife. And I'm waiting to see if there's a kid, because that would explain why he's trying to plan for the future. Oh, yeah, potentially. I mean, it, but has he reached a breaking point? No, because he's getting re re rejuvenated right now. He'll be rejuvenated yeah. with a little massage. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't say a handjob pirate hook. I didn't thing. say a handjob okay. either. I said a massage. There's something totally <laughs> different about that. So, no, that's cool. And we... We had a lot of good stuff in this episode, um, and I'm looking forward to next week because 
again, I think the character development is going to continue, and I think these storylines are going to progress and continue because I think we'll see next week. Uh, you know, John Silver putting himself continuously in situations, not so much that he's surviving, but that he's needed. Because yeah. right now, he is now in control of his own destiny because he's the only one that has the page on the map, whether he remembers it all or not, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, I bet there'll be a point where he'll be trying to remember it and doesn't remember it, but he's protecting himself mm -hmm. in any aspect that he can. And I think that the other pirates are going to need each other. Mm -hmm. So um, with that being said, uh, I think that we've covered a, a extensive amount of this episode and I want to go right into predictions. Roy, what do you think is going to happen next week? And now hmm. you're after buzz TV predictions. For next week, I feel as though we might actually get to see who that woman was that uh, Captain Flint uh, ran into. Uh, Obviously. I believe that Eleanor is going to have to make another decision of protecting Max, and she's going to actually act out and protect Max. I don't know if ooh, that was in the ooh, preview like or not. Uh, there wasn't anything about that, but I, uh, I could see that for sure. Like with a paddle. Like I, making I, think that, I don't know if that was her or not, but not a paddle, like something... An oar. An oar, yeah. Is that what they're called? Whatever. She's going to protect Max in some way, but I don't think it's going to be enough to rebuild their relationship together. I think Max is going to say thank you, and then that's going to be their way of separating. Do you think that their relationship is done? I do think it's I think it's going to be one of those relationships where they will always love each other but they cannot do anything further. It's they both are going on different out. pathways. Yeah. Max needs to get out of being a whore. Uh, Eleanor wants to raise, make it to the top and they just have two different needs different that they want paths to that they're going to end up going on. Exactly. So I think that's what's going to happen with them. Um, I think Billy is going to be really good at jumping more on rocks because he was really good at it before and I just want to keep seeing well, more Billy. Well, Mr. <laughs> Hopper is great at hopping. Yep, yep, exactly. So, also had a birthday this past week, so happy birthday, Tom. <laughs> and um, I think maybe Captain Vane is going to... I don't know. There's something with Captain Vane. Obviously, the men are going to go turn around and uh, attack him or mm -hmm. verbally attack him. Maybe kill um, Rackham. Ooh, you think Rackham's gonna die? Or be very close to it, beaten to a pulp. Maybe beaten to a pulp. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's a lot of lot of things that we I can know. potentially see next week. I'm Hopefully, sorry. we'll see the all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. So, um, I, I I think that, like I said, I, I I foresee some kind of partnership developing with Flint and Vane and uh, Eleanor Guthrie, whether. It's mutual or not, they're going to need each other, and I think there's going to be all kinds of fun odds that they're going to be facing mm -hmm. with that, because they're both captains, and they both want things, all three of them want things a certain way, but who's going to be the one to compromise? And I think at the end of the day, Eleanor is going to be the one that makes them compromise. I think that they both kind of listen yeah. to what she says enough. You know, obviously, Vane having a, a past history with her and the way he showed that soft side to her, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a there is a mutual respect between Flint and Eleanor, that we saw this week with the way they the way they spoke to each other, mm -hmm. um, and I also foresee Mark Ryan coming in next week to talk to us <laughs> about the episode. Yes. Um, so yes. So tune in next week uh, when we talk more about Black Sails episode number three. And again, special guest Mark Ryan as Quartermaster Gates will be here joining us on the panel. Uh, Roya, tell us where they can find you. Guys, you can find me on Twitter at Hey Roya. That's H E Y R. Wait. What is it? <laughs> H-E-Y-R-O-Y-A. Sorry, it's really early for me at the moment. And uh, I'm also on Instagram with the same Hey Roya name. All right. And as always, you can find me at RyanHooks92 on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Yahoo. So feel free to tune in next week. Got Mark Ryan coming in after Buzz TV. Woo. Black Sails, Episode 3. We'll see you then. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.